Welcome to Tutorial 2. In this tutorial, we will learn how to edit previously created layouts and use scenarios to run more complicated simulations. First, we'll need to either recreate the layout used in Tutorial 1 or open the layout from Tutorial 1. Let's save this layout as a new file with a new name. Click on File and then Save As. We'll save this layout in its own folder this time. Let's call it Tutorial 2. And let's give the layout the same name. You'll notice the name on the window has changed to reflect that we're now working on Tutorial 2. To begin the expansion, we'll turn on the grid so that we can better organize the layout. If you want to move an object around the drawing board, click on it and drag it to a new location. If you need to move multiple objects, click and drag a selection box around them, and then click and drag the selected objects to the new location. Notice that all the connections between the objects stay intact. When expanding a plant, you may find that you need two of the same object. In GPSX, you can duplicate existing objects and groups of objects by selecting them and using the copy and paste buttons on the toolbar. For this expansion, let's duplicate the clarifier. To do this, select the clarifier and then press the copy button. Select the destination for the copy and press the paste button. Now that we have two clarifiers, we'll have to change some of the connections in our layout. We'll start by removing the connections that will need to be replaced. To remove a connection, click on the point where the connection meets an object, and then drag the connection away. When you release the mouse, GPSX will ask you to confirm that you want to delete this connection. OK, now that the old connections are gone, we can begin to connect the two clarifiers to the aeration tank. To do this, we're going to have to add a number of flow combiners and splitters to the layout, so we'll need to make room. To do this, let's use the mouse wheel to zoom out a bit to give us more room to work with. Now that we've got some more visible space, we can start adding the flow combiners and splitters we need. Flow combiners and splitters can be found under the flow combiners and splitters group on the process table. We're going to need one two-flow splitter to split the mixed liquor from the aeration tank between the two clarifiers. Just like in tutorial 1, drag and drop the splitter onto the drawing board. Once in place, we can attach the output of the tank to the input of the splitter, and the two splitter outputs to the inputs of the two clarifiers. The next step in completing this expansion is to combine the underflows from the two clarifiers and connect them to the aeration tank. This can be done by placing a two-flow combiner on the drawing board, connecting the two underflows to it, and then connecting the combined flow to the aeration tank. Notice that the combiner is facing in a direction that would make connecting it to the clarifiers awkward. If an object is facing in an awkward direction, select it and then click the rotate button on the toolbar. Each click will rotate the object by 90 degrees. With the flow combiner now facing in the correct direction, we can attach our clarifiers. and attach the combined flow to the aeration tank. Now that we've got most of the combiners and splitters we need in place, let's move the objects around a bit so that the connections look a little less confusing. Finally, we have to combine the effluence of the two clarifiers. We'll do this in the same way as the underflows. Now that we have our expansion all laid out, let's get a better view. Because we've changed the layout of the plant by adding a second clarifier, we should update our labels. Keeping the names of the streams and objects updated and meaningful will help us to identify them later. No two streams in GPSX can have the same label so copied objects will never keep the same stream labels. This is done to prevent confusion between multiple streams. 
We'll give this clarifier similar names to clarifier 1, but differentiate it by marking them as the second clarifier. When you delete a connection, the object down flow will lose the label associated with that connection. This prevents the creation of multiple streams with the same name. To keep the readability of your layout high, and make life easier when simulating, you should try and label everything. The little extra time spent here will make using the more advanced features of GPSX a lot easier. To verify that we have everything named correctly, let's turn the stream labels on and zoom in a bit so we can read them better. Everything looks good, so let's save it and then start setting up our simulations. Since we've made changes to the model, GPSX will ask us if we want to rebuild the simulation code or simulate with the old model. We want to simulate with this new plant, so click Rebuild Model. When the simulation code is finished generating, let's create a way to control the flow split fraction and create new output displays for our clarifiers. Let's start by zooming in on our layout using the mouse wheel so we can focus on the MLSS splitter. Right click on the splitter and select Input Parameters, Splitter Setup, and drag and drop Split Fraction to our Input Control tab. Under Input Control Properties, set the Split Fraction Controls range to 0 to 1 and the Control Type to Slider. OK. With the control created, double click on the new clarifier to create a quick display window. Change the Output Tab's names so that we know what's on the tabs. Finally, let's create an output tab that shows us the total influent flow on one graph and the effluent suspended solids for both the clarifiers and the combined on the other. Right click on the influent object and select Output Variables, Flow, and drag and drop the flow onto our new output tab. Now to graph the combined suspended solids, right click on the effluent stream of the final combiner and select Output Variables, Composite Variables, and place the total suspended solids on its own graph. Place the suspended solids from each clarifier on the same graph by right clicking on the stream from the clarifier and selecting Output Variables, Composite Variables, and dragging and dropping total suspended solids. With both graphs created, Let's give them appropriate names and scales. We'll set the title of this graph to Flow. And keep the graph type as an XY graph. We'll set the range of 0 to 1000 meters cubed per day. We'll set the title of the second graph to Suspended Solids. And the range of 0 to 150 grams per meter cubed.
Finally, let's make some graphs of the suspended solids profiles of each of the clarifiers. Right click on the clarifier and select Output Variables, Suspended Solids, and create a new graph by dragging and dropping the variable. We're going to make these graphs horizontal bar charts. To do this, right click on the graph and set the graph type accordingly. Name the graph and set an appropriate scale. Do the same for the second clarifier. With both graphs ready, auto-arrange them. Before we proceed with our simulation, let's take a moment to explore the layout in the bottom left of the screen. Using the View menu on the menu bar, it is possible to turn the grid and labels on and off, which can be helpful in identifying the parts of the plant you need to work with. Now that we have our input controls and output graphs created, we are going to familiarize ourselves with scenarios. Scenarios are very useful. For example, to change a model parameter, in this case, the type of influent flow, without recompiling, you can create a new scenario. Each user-defined scenario can have a different set of model parameters, so that the same model can quickly be simulated using different operating conditions. To create a new scenario, click on the Scenarios button, which is found on the Simulation Control Toolbar, and select New Scenario. We'll derive this scenario from the default setting and give it a relevant name. In this scenario, we're going to have a sinusoidal influent flow pattern instead of the constant flow in the default scenario. To change this, right click on the influent object and select Flow, Flow Data, and set the Flow Type drop down menu to Sinusoidal. The changes you've made will be highlighted in green. Now, set the flow rate to 5,000 meters cubed per day. With the flow set, let's switch between the default scenario and our custom scenario and take a look at the differences. Once we're satisfied with our scenario setup, let's run a one-day steady-state simulation. I'm going to also add a small delay to the simulation run so we can see the changes in the suspended solids over the day. When the simulation completes, take a look at the outputs then change the split fraction to 0 0.3. Set the stop time to 2 days and click the continue button to continue the simulation from where it left off. When the simulation completes, observe the changes to the suspended solids in the outputs. Change the influent flow to 8,500 meters cubed per day and continue the simulation for another day. Our simulation now reflects three days of operation, with the sinusoidal influent flow and changes to the split fraction and influent flow at the end of the first and second days respectively. Now that we've run our simulation, you may wish to create a report with a list of all the parameter values and model results in Excel format. 
To do this, click the Report button on the GPSX toolbar, select Standard, and click Generate. Select the location and file name and click Save. Finally, click Yes if you would like to view your newly generated report. Browse through the various worksheets to see the model layout, details of each object, and output graph data. And that's it. We've successfully expanded our plant, used scenarios to simulate changes in flow and changes to the flow split fraction between the clarifiers, and generated an Excel report of our findings. Thank you for watching this video. If you're interested in information on our other software products such as CapDetWorks for preliminary design and costing, ToxChem for industrial wastewater treatment modeling, or WattPro for drinking water treatment modeling, you can visit our website at www.hydromantis.com for further information.